Sometimes, especially now that I've been off work for a few months now, I get cabin fever. Now, living in California, you wouldn't think that would be possible. We typically have over 300 days of sunshine a year. In the days that we don't have sunshine, we can still get out and do stuff. Well, Mother Nature gets pissed off at us every now and then, but for the most part, she's pretty gentle on us Californians. So we can go outside almost every day and do something. Some days, though, I'm just not feeling it. And what I end up doing is sitting inside for days. And it begins to drive you nuts. Eventually, you realize the need to get out of the house, whether you're feeling it or not. So there was a day a few weeks ago where that's exactly what happened. I had been inside a couple days, and it was driving me crazy. So I'm like, I need to go for a walk. Just get outside for a while. And I decided to walk up to Vaughn's, which is our local grocery store, and return a movie. It's about half a mile from our house, so it's a pretty good walk. And on the way, actually, right before I got to Vaughn's, I passed a place called Rite Aid. Now, I never go to Rite Aid, because Vaughn's usually has everything that I need. But this day was different. This day, the door at Rite Aid was open, and I caught a whiff of a smell from my childhood that almost instantly took me back to being 10 years old. It was a smell from Walgreens where I used to go get baseball cards and stickers. It was a smell I hadn't smelled in a long time. And I just had to go in. So I dropped the movie off at Vaughn's and I'm on my way back home. On my way back home, I stopped by Rite Aid. And I just walk the aisles. I have no idea what I'm looking for. I don't need anything. I'm just roaming. I hit the liquor aisle and their selection is smaller than Bond's. I check for baseball cards and stickers and I don't really have anything like that now. I look for anything that might just be a good deal. Nothing. It was so weird. A place that I never go to smells like a place that I used to go to. And all of a sudden I feel compelled to go in only to find nothing. And the weird part is, I would do it again. Now speaking of Vons, Vons is another place that I quickly fell in love with when I first came out to California. And when we got here eight years ago, everything was new. New job, new place to live, new church, new everything. And that included a new grocery store. Now, back in Illinois, it was always Walmart or Sam's Club. Those were our go-to. Now, they have both of those out here, but Walmart is a little bit of a drive, and Sam's Club is in a completely different town. So when we first got here, we were looking for a grocery store that was a little bit closer to home. And lucky for us, there was a Vons in the neighborhood. Just down the road. Perfect. I still remember going there the first time. Getting sticker shock as the prices are obviously higher than what you'll find in Illinois. But honestly, they weren't too bad. And the store, even though it is a chain, just felt small. It felt like home. So from that day forward, Vons has been our grocery store. If we need anything from medicine to muffins, whiskey to Windex, <clears throat> it's always Vons. So I'm there a lot. But even though I'm there a lot, when I am there, I don't really go out of my way to talk to anybody. I usually have a specific thing or a, maybe a list of things that I'm going for, and I'm in and out. But one day as my wife and I were pushing out our groceries, this guy walks by. And I noticed that he has his beard. Now, obviously, I'm a great respecter of beards. I know how long it takes to grow these things out. So when I see one, I'll usually just give the dude a nod, if I do anything at all. But this day, for whatever reason, I just felt compelled to say something. 
So I'm like, hey man, great beard. And he's like, thanks, you too. And I smile and that was pretty much it. Now his beard wasn't spectacular. In fact, it was barely longer than mine at the time. And I see beards literally every day. But on this day, at this moment, with this guy, I just felt like I needed to say something. Now, that's no secret. I'm a creature of habit. Everything from what I eat for breakfast, to the route I take to work, to how I write these Whiskey Words episodes. And all these things, I follow pretty much the same routine. Day in and day out. I don't vary much. And when it comes to workouts, that's pretty much true as well. I started working out when I was about 14 years old. And my routine really hasn't changed much over the last few decades. What I'll typically do is pick a couple of body parts to focus on, say shoulders and back, for example. And I'll work on those for usually around an hour. I'll do two to three different exercises for each body part, four sets of each, and then finish off with some sort of abdominal exercise since it's really hard to overtrain the abs. And that's my workout. Been doing it for years. And sometimes I'll just get in maybe one to two workouts a week. Other times it'll be three to four. But the basic workout is almost always the same. Almost. There are times, though, when I go out to my garage with every intention of working out a particular body part or two. And for whatever reason, once I get out there, something changes. On that particular day, there is something inside of me that wants to do something different. Something that wants to break away from the routine just for the day. Sometimes it'll just be one body part that I work. Sometimes I'll just go super heavy and see how many plates I can stack on the bar. Sometimes I'll just go for a walk. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does anymore, I just go with it. Now, there's something to be said for keeping your routine. I'm a stickler for that, especially when you find something that's working for you. But every now and then, when something in your gut tells you, not today, today you need to do this. Now pay attention. I don't believe those are accidents. Getting dressed for me in the morning is always a chore, especially when I don't lay out my clothes the night before for work. If I don't lay out my clothes, it's usually a matter of me going to my closet and pulling together anything that is ironed, and somewhat matches. I have a lot of clothes. A lot. Tons of dress pants and even more dress shirts. So it's usually not a big deal to put together an outfit. Grab some socks, shoes, a belt. I'm good to go. This whole process typically doesn't take any more than a minute or two. But some mornings, it doesn't go quite that fast. In fact, some mornings, it's painstaking to just get through this process of picking out something to wear. I had one of those mornings just the other day. And this morning, I wasn't even going to work. This morning, I was just getting dressed so that I could lounge around the house. So, you would think that it would be even easier, right? Who cares if it matches if you're just going to be hanging around the house, right? So I grab a pair of black jeans, a brownish t-shirt, and a brown belt, a pair of just plain white socks, and then I go to grab my shoes. I've got a lot of shoes too, but my first instinct is to grab a pair of brown slip-ons because they'll match my belt and my brownish t-shirt. But then I see a pair of black slip-ons that would match my pants. 
And I also see a pair of black tennis shoes that would work as well. So, I sit there for a good minute trying to determine which pair to grab. Which pair is going to work best for this outfit? And after a minute, I decide on a brown pair. No particular reason. I just felt like it was the right choice for that particular day. Didn't seem like a big decision. So why did it take so long for me to choose? Brown or black, slip-on or tennis shoe. Was it really that big a deal? Jeremiah 17.9 says the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? And Romans 7 says, I have discovered this principle, and this is Paul talking, this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Now, if the heart is wicked and the most deceitful of all things, and even though I have a desire to do what is right, if my heart is still a slave to that old sinful nature, when exactly can it be trusted? Can you really go with your gut? as they say. Now the Bible tells you that if you are a follower of Christ, you are a new creation. You basically have a new heart. One that should desire to please God and should be more trustworthy, right? Okay, but then when do you trust it? When is it right to follow your heart? Follow your gut? Go with your instincts? And when does it not matter? I mean, would it have made a difference if I hadn't went to Rite Aid that day, followed that smell? Would it have mattered if I hadn't complimented that guy on his beard at Bonds? And seriously, brown shoes or black shoes? Did it really matter? In the grand scheme of things, what difference did it make? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know if it matters or not. But it might. Maybe stopping in at Rite Aid that day was just what I needed to put me in a better mood and be a better husband to my wife, father to my kids for that day. Maybe that compliment to that bearded guy was just what he needed that day. Maybe it boosted his confidence a little, made him walk a little taller, smile a little longer. And maybe those brown shoes even made a difference. Because you see, those brown shoes were given to me by my dad. So the next time I talk to him, I can tell him how comfortable they were and how I wore them just the other day. You see, I think it all it might not seem like much. And honestly, each individual event probably isn't that much. But they all add up. It's like a ripple effect. And I don't think we'll ever see the full consequences of our actions here. I think the best we can hope for is trusting those instincts, acting on those instincts, and understanding that there's always something just a little bit bigger going on that we just can't see. So the next time you feel that prompting, next time you feel that itch to do something or say something that seems like it came from just out of nowhere, next time you have to make a decision and it's a decision that seems trivial and insignificant, don't blow it off. I'm a firm believer that those are no accidents. That those are all part of a bigger story. We've been given our instincts for a reason. And that the more we decide to, decide to use them, 
the more that we can trust them. Even when they involve something simple, like a smell or a compliment or a pair of your dad's old brown shoes. Glasses up to good friends, great nights, stiff drinks, and real conversations. I'll see you next time.